DesignCon is a very nice conference for networking, but also for uh, a lot of uh, technical information that we gather. So very great conference. I, uh, I work on uh, SI signal integrity as well as uh, electromagnetic interference for uh, mobile devices. They do impact the PCB design. I would say that uh, the PCB design is uh, one of the key factors uh, to minimize somehow the problems uh, that you may have uh, in a mobile device. Uh, inside uh, any mobile device there is so many uh, PCBs and uh, they are all interacting each other. So it's very important making sure that uh, signal integrity is preserved uh, at very early stage and also uh, this is important to avoid the electromagnetic interference with antennas and also radiation from the device itself. Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, you are absolutely right. If we think of a cell phone, actually the tendency is to reduce the size. So it's not that big of a structure. And uh, ideally you may think, okay, there is not SI problems, but actually there are some. Uh, one reason is that the speed has been growing a lot, also for mobile phones, because now the phone is not just for a phone call, but it's for many other things, for GPS, for internet, and in a few years it will be even more. And so what happened is that uh, we have uh, a high speed signal in a small, uh, for example, if you think of the USB uh, 3.1, that's already five gigabit per second, so it's quite high speed. And the other problem is that uh, in the mobile phone, even though there is uh, this uh, size that's so small, there is also other things like antennas, uh, multiple antennas actually. So one of the emerging problem uh, recently is uh, something called radio frequency interference or RFI and uh, dissense. This means that uh, high speed signal and also components such as uh, AP uh, packages can interact with the antenna and can create problems for the user. So reduce the user experience. Uh, so exactly, there is, uh, unfortunately, there is also a SI issue in cell phones. So uh, there are several issues in terms of uh, EM, CMI for uh, mobile devices. Of course, uh, uh, ideally, the engineers try to prevent them as much as possible. So if you look at inside a phone, you will see a lot of uh, shieldings, for example. So you actually don't see anything, almost anything. Everything is shielded completely, but still there is some uh, issue. So, Somehow it's funny because say, okay, where this radiation comes from? Um, the thing is that uh, even a very small, uh, maybe aperture, can cause uh, leakage of fields, uh, can cause a coupling effect. And of course, even if now phones uh, are, uh, uh, you can, are waterproof and uh, against dust and everything, still there is connecting point uh, for accessories, for example. So like I was mentioning about the USB, so you have to charge your phone, or even if you do not charge your phone, but you have to connect maybe uh, the phone to a computer for data transfer, there is a long cable. So a very small uh, um, leakage or a very small uh, problem at PCB can interact with uh, one of these, uh, like cable for example, and can increase a lot the uh, EMI and cause uh, issue. Uh, such as radiation and coupling to other other parts. <laughs> so the problem is not just on the phone itself, but it's also on the system that's surrounding the phone. Yeah. The reality is that uh, this is not difficult to do. If we look at the uh, layout of a board, if we make sure that we use the best practice for the layout using uh, design rules, and they are very well known for SI or PI, for example, avoiding splitting planes or reducing discontinuities and so on, we can make sure that that board will not radiate or will not have the chances that will have an issue are very, very small. But then the problem is that, that this board will be inside or will be somewhere else, right? So it will interact with a lot of other things surrounding the board. So even though we are controlling maybe the common mode conversion, uh, even if there is very, very tiny chance, that can also create issue because it couples to another part which radiates. So maybe the PCB, it's uh, very perfect, like it's perfect, it's uh, error uh, free, but because it interacts with some other parts, it can also create an EMI problem.
Sure, there is many tools. Uh, those are uh, example like uh, Mentor, Cadence, uh, all the layout, uh, they provide a tool and you can do some different level of analysis. DRC, Design Rule Checker, is the first level. Then you can do more advanced analysis. Um, and ideally, uh, all these tools, they can prevent uh, uh, major, uh, SI, major SI as well as EMI problem at the uh, PCB level. So, they, they are quite useful for that point of view. It, uh, it can improve. So basically, if um, we somehow, let, let's imagine that you have uh, maybe a multi-layer board and there is a signal that's uh, routed from one point to another point on this board. So one first uh, uh, difference is if this signal is routed on one of the top or bottom layer, obviously can radiate more because it's kind of exposed to air. Uh, if the signal is embedded, so ideally, as long as the reference of this signal or strip line is more or less ideal, the radiation is very small because it's embedded in, uh, in this. And also most of the board in the end, they will also have a shield or something like that. So it's, it's very small. Uh, though sometimes, uh, because uh, the board is very dense, so you have to use even a very small space of the board. Some of these uh, uh, lines, they are routed maybe close to the edges of the board. So. Uh, what can happen is that um, there could be radiation from the edges of the board and that can couple with some other part. So what people try to do is to uh, kind of create shielding around the signal using bias or even more creating like a type of coplanar structure like you mentioned. So you kind of uh, uh, fill the rest of the, uh, the layer with, uh, with metal. So these, uh, allow to improve the uh, EMI, to reduce the risk of uh, EMI. Uh, it, it can certainly improve that. Yeah. Maybe when you assemble something and you have to go to a vendor to get a component, uh, they provide some specification, even on EMI, say, ah, this has very low EMI issue. But the reality is that uh, this component by itself has one EMI, but when this is in a system, it can be very different. So that information, it can really use too much for uh, uh, really understanding the EMI. So I think, uh, of course, we can try to use the best that we have uh, or we can obtain, but still it's required to do some analysis to make sure that uh, the EMI is preserved there. Yeah. yeah, of course, uh, uh, even if you look online, you'll find a lot of material on this. And in general, actually, any layout tool provides some uh, uh, design rules checking uh, um, that give uh, maybe a warning when there is uh, something which could be a potential problem, like a signal on a, maybe on a split plane and there is no decap, so that's a problem. So we place a decoupling capacitor and maybe we solve the problem. Or uh, other situation like the trace is running too close to the edge and so on. But still, after this, is required some further analysis after the layout is done. For myself, it's important uh, uh, more uh, as a, a networking uh, place, to be honest, um, because uh, uh, somehow you get to talk to engineer and to see what uh, to share your thought and to see what they are doing. Uh, but also at the same time, it's important because you get a chance to see what other people they are doing and making sure that they are on the same page. You are not too behind in the technology. So. Sure, any advice that I could give to somebody who is starting, uh, of course you can uh, maybe first uh, need to do some homework, maybe um, find some material online and maybe have uh, some basic information, but probably the best starting point is to talk to people, people that they already have a little bit of experience, uh, try to get information for them and maybe uh, try to narrow down because it's too wide topic, narrow down to what's your requirement and maybe try to get the expert on that so that they can help you. And I think it's a great community in general, so everyone is uh, very happy to help and discuss on those topics. So that's definitely a good starting point, I would say.